Good morning and welcome to Greater St. James AME Church School. Today is also a very special day at Greater St. James because we are celebrating 155 years as a church, as a community of faith. And that is why we have these gold flowers on today. You will probably see a lot of members with them on because we're in celebration mode because God has kept us for 155 years. So come on down and be in worship as we celebrate our existence. And now our church school lesson, Hope Eternal hope eternal. Our lesson scripture is coming from 2 Corinthians 4 verses 16 through chapter 5 verse 10. The focus scripture is the same. The key verse, if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians five and one and now the focus scripture for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heaven. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that which we be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the self same thing is God, who also has given us unto has given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in this body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say that, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it is good or bad. Our lesson today is entitled Hope Eternal. And that is the focus that we must make sure that we are paying attention on, on because our hope is in our everlasting life, which is in heaven. And so now the introduction, please read along. Everyone wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. From time to time, we meet ordinary people who have a profound impact on our lives. For me, such a person was mother. That is what everyone in the church called her. She was one of the sweetest souls you could ever meet. She seemed to be in her 70s, retired and a faithful member with a deep love for the Lord. Everyone at the church, children and adults, love to be around mother. She was just pleasant to talk to and very accommodating. Once I heard mother give a short testimony. She said she had done her best to raise her children, did what she had to do in life, and was just waiting for the Lord to call her home. Did mother wish to die? No, far from it but she thought she had fulfilled her work on earth and was therefore ready to go home and meet her savior. She appeared at peace with the Lord and 
the world and herself, I never forget that testimony. If an attitude can show how mature a believer is, it is the person's attitude towards death. And on that issue, as Apostle Paul pointed out in the text, there is a little paradox. It is natural for us to want to live as long as possible. That is the instinct of life that runs through all of our veins. Yet persons who know the Lord wonder what it will be like to meet the Lord after death. Facing death is like standing before a strange, strange lock door in an unfamiliar building. Out of curiosity, we want to know what is behind the door. However, our survival instincts tell us to proceed with caution. And the most concerning thing is we have to open the door by ourselves and without any weapons to use if an emergency arises. No one can look behind death's door and tell us for sure what it, what is behind it. That is the reason why opening such a door can be scary. It, in such situations, what options do we have? Our best option is to go with what the scriptures and the Holy Spirit tells us. If we are firm in our faith in Christ, we know that behind the transition of life are mansions for those who have maintained their faith in Christ. For others, it must be a horrifying thought. Unless you adopt the attitude of whatever will be, will be, the problem with that attitude is that many people can say it, but only a few people can believe it. As we look at our scripture today, Paul, who wrote the book of 2 Corinthians and 1 Corinthians, is reminding of this, reminding the believers that there is a hope that springs eternal. There is a hope that we have according to our faith that if this earthly house of this tabernacle, meaning if this body was to die, if death was to come upon us, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands. Now, when you read about what Jesus talked about in uh, the book of John, he talked about, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in me. He's talking about there are many mansions that are prepared for the believers. Now let me break it on down to what we used to sing about. I remember there's a song that says, there's a leak in this old building and my soul has got to move. Your soul, when it leaves the body on this side is going somewhere. And we hope as believers, according to our faith, that the, our eternal salvation is why we rest and have that peace that even when death should come to be absent from this body we do believe is to be present with the lord and let us be reminded that we have to be right get right in order to live eternally and so now we're moving to telling the bible story please read along in the text, Paul just called on the believers to sort out the priorities of life. In sorting out these priorities, believers could emphasize earthly matters which were temp temporary in nature, but the wise alternative was to concentrate on heavenly issues that had eternal consequences. Therefore, the best way to get over their earthly struggles was to keep focus on eternity with Christ. That is still great advice for us today. Paul expanded on the idea of the temporary versus the permanent with references to the human body. Our earthly bodies are temporary and will in time decay after physical death. Such is the nature of humanity. But that is okay since at the resurrection we will not need those bodies. Instead, we will get new bodies that are permanent, indestructible, and celestial. Therefore, believers can look forward to a glorious future as the scriptures show that God promised believers such a destiny. 
While on earth, believers get the assurance of this glorious eternity through the work of the Holy Spirit. Paul reference to God's judgment seat highlighted one of the reoccurring themes of scripture. Everyone must eventually give an account for what they did in life. God will grant rewards accordingly. God will grant rewards accordingly. Good works earn glorious rewards. Bad works bring eternal damnation. Elsewhere, Paul compared the judgment seat to the judge booth at the Olympic Games. God's reward system works just like how athletes are rewarded for performance in Olympic events. And that is what we're running toward. We're running toward a prize. And that prize is the crown of life. And that is why it's very important for us not to be distracted, not to lose focus, not to be in a space that when the Lord should come for us, we are not ready. We must be constantly on our guard. We must be diligent, faithful, committed at all costs because at the end of this journey, there will be a reward for us. So now we're moving to the Sankofa. When Christians face life-threatening situations, their responses show the strength of their relationship with God. An adventure in the life of Sarah Corshan shows this truth. Mrs. Corshan had a mission to carry the love of Jesus to the native people of Bolivia. In 1980, she, along with a small team of missionaries, went into an expedition to those people. To reach the targeted persons, the team traveled along roads that exposed them to many dangers. Along the way, the missionaries ran into local security forces because of what was happening in the country. Then the soldiers were suspicious of American missionaries. The situation became very tense. Sister Sarah Corson knew this was a volatile situation. However, she also sensed the presence of God in the confrontation with the military. This gave her courage to engage the soldiers about Christ and God's love for them. She seemed to ignore that the soldiers' guns were already and aimed at them. Sarah's boldness to engage the soldiers about Christ took them by surprise. After a while, the soldiers released the team. The team had risked everything to carry out the mission. And God came through for them when they needed his protection. As someone wisely said, we are not ready to live for a mission until we are ready to die for it. Sarah believed in her mission and was ready to die for it. This is one of the adventures given in the book, in the Sarah Corson book, Risking everything. And there are times when you have to think about being in a position of fear. We must also remember God is there with us. How do you know that? The Bible says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. The Bible also says that God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Let's give the Lord a praise right there. In your private moments of devotion, we would like for you to read the case study in your private moments of devotion. And now we're moving toward the life application section. Please follow along. In the lesson, you saw how Paul urged the Corinthians to eternal life issues rather than earthly concerns. Likewise, we encourage you to take time out to consider the extent to which you do this. As you gather more experience in life, the easier it becomes not to sweat the small stuff. If you do such assessments often, it will help you decide on the level of attention you should give to life concerns. Paul's judgment seat reference reminds us that the God of love and mercy will serve 
we serve is also a God of justice and judgment. You may want to check Psalms 89 and 14 to see how this balance works with God as you assess events in your life and the lives of your loved ones. Ensure to keep this balance. Do not make the mistake many believers often make. They emphasize God's love and mercy and ignore the attributes related to judgment. God assesses us on all scores, yet rewards and punishments flow from the same throne. In this series of lessons, we examine many aspects of faith, yet we have not covered several areas concerning belief in God. In Indeed, no one can dis discuss all facets of faith as some parts are still mysteries to us. Even the most respected theologians must admit they cannot explain many features of faith. Those parts of the mysteries may remain baffling until we meet God in eternity. As you examine your faith in Christ, accept those unknown elements, work with those you understand. Trust God to take you over the mystery bridges that your wisdom cannot explain. And when sicknesses or diseases come, prayerfully ask God for healing, but accept that the recovery may not come on your timetable. When this happens, wrap yourself in the comfort that God loves you and will do the best for you. Further remind yourself that in eternity, you will get a body that will defy sickness and last forever. So many times we do pray for healing on this side. So many times we pray for our loved ones and our friends and the people we, are, we care about. But there are times when healing is realized and it's an eternal healing, meaning the suffering of this present time cannot even be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. And that is the other part. When you think about heaven, heaven is described as a place of where the streets are paved with gold. Just imagine the little bit of gold we wear, but the streets in heaven are made of pure gold. And then there are gates made of pearl. Then they talked about the foundations of heaven and how exquisite it is. And when our loved ones leave this side, I often say they close their eyes on this side and they open them in heaven. So many times we not, will not want them to return because they're in such a glorious place. So sometimes it hurts because the absence, but when you think about the peace, the ultimate peace and healing that God gives, that's where our heart should rejoice and remember that there is eternal hope because if this earthly tent is destroyed, there is a building that's better than this. So we thank God for his promises. And now the questions. As you grow older, what things that mattered seem to matter less? Why do you think this is so? I want to tell a story about my grandmother who had the most gifted hands with quilting. And she would quilt, 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 and if, if she promised you a quilt, she was going to give it to you. But she was getting sick, and I remember her start giving away her quilts. And that's when I kind of saw how she was shifting off this side and turning toward her heavenly home. In that, the Bible talks about what would it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his soul. So many times people who think about the things of this world and they think this is all they, they are going to get, they hold on to these life's treasures very hard. But when people understand that death is near, you watch how they begin to release those things, almost looking toward their eternal home because that is the building that they are desiring to go to. So you will see a lot of people who grow older, they seem to be caring less and less 
about the concerns of this world because they have a world to come that they're looking to and they're understanding they're just traveling through this land. Question number two, as you face your mortality, how has your faith and outlook on life changed? I understand that the Lord is my shepherd and I understand that he will only do what's best for me. And I remember that according to the scriptures, he has a heavenly home prepared for me. So as I look at the reality of our mortality, we must make sure that our soul is saved. Our soul is saved and we can only do that by praying the prayer of repentance. Question number three, in what ways do you think one can develop a growing trust in God's promise of eternal life through faith? In what ways? The only thing I will tell you, whatever you feed will grow. Whatever you feed will grow. So every opportunity that you can feed your faith by connecting to the Word of God, connecting your life to godly people and the things of God, you will watch how your faith just begin to just be more stabilized. Even when you think about how the winds of life will grow and flow, it's like the stability of your faith will help you understand the promise of eternal life is what we should be focusing on. And so we do have to pay attention to what is getting our attention, especially as we're trying to grow more stronger in our faith. Let me also share more prayer, more power, more prayer, more power. That is how we can continue to grow in our faith so we can lay hold to our hope that is eternal. We certainly hope you enjoyed our lesson today. Our closing devotion is found in hymn 280, O Jesus, I have promised. O Jesus, I have promised. And now the closing prayer. Dear Father, help me to keep faith in your promises of a glorious eternal life for all who serve you till the end. Help me to remember that in this life we may have tribulation, but when we get over there in your heavenly home, we will rejoice forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today. We certainly hope you will join us for our morning worship service virtually or come down to the sanctuary where word and worship is are going on. And we hope you will celebrate with us as we remember 155 years of service and faith. Have a wonderful day, one and all.